let's see, announcements, Monday, 6 p.m. and 6.30, we have Finance Committee and Administrative Council, respectively. Um, Methodist Women is going to meet on the 18th at 1.30 via Zoom. Our next crossroad will be on Friday the 20th at 7 p.m. Um, Erlene's going to need help because Gina and I will both be out of town that night. So anybody that wants to help, please talk to Erlene. And then this Thursday night, we have trustees. The meeting was canceled this past week. I think everybody was feeling under the weather, so it has been moved to this Thursday night. I think that's everything. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a joy to be here on this cloudy day. You, North Carolina weather, y'all. I'm telling you, I don't know what to do about it. We have the air conditioner on, and then we scoot in here and cut the heat up. So um, I think next Sunday we're going to be back in air conditioned weather again. So um, there we go. It is what it is, right? Okay. Let's pray. Everybody just take a minute. All that stuff you're thinking about that you got to do later, just let it go. Be fine for a little while. God will hold it. Gracious God, we have gathered here this day to bring our praise and our worship to you. We have gathered here on this day to sing songs of joy and love and hope. We have gathered here on this day to hear your word proclaimed. We have gathered here on this day to be support for one another. Open our hearts, open our minds. Fill us to overflowing. We pray that everything we say and do here on this day would be pleasing to you. We pray all of this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please stand and join with us in singing hymn number 158, Come Christians, Join to Sing.
Father, but first let us pray. And the prayer for illumination is in your bulletin. Let's pray that together this morning. Holy God, Word made flesh, let us come to this Word open to being surprised. Silence our agendas, banish our assumptions, cast out our casual detachment, confound our expectations, clear the cobwebs from our ears, penetrate the corners of our hearts with this Word. We know that you can, we pray that you will, and we wait with great anticipation. Amen. Please join with me in the Psalter on page 754 in the Nun of the Symbol. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters, restores my life, leads me in right paths for the sake of the Lord's name. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. Oh 
that is just, I, I'm always happy when I hear y'all singing that one. It's so pretty. Well, it's that time for our joys and our concerns. Um, if there is anyone out there with a pen that, because I don't see one up here right now, um, that can write down uh, if you any prayer requests you hear from me so that I will have those, I would appreciate it. It helps me a lot to have it written down. <laughs> so, all right, if I get three or four uh, people to do that, that doesn't matter. It'll be fine. She's got it. I think she's, I think Melissa's going to write this down for me. So, joys and concerns. You don't have, uh, uh, Dolores does. <laughs> Okay, there you go. She's got two pins now. Okay. Joys, any joys today? That was beautiful. I believe it's Good Shepherd Sunday, is it not? So, yay. That was lovely. Even though I'm going in a different direction today, I actually kept the scriptures in there. I felt like we needed for that. So, um, I'm glad I did that. Others? Yes. Yes. I'm really? thankful that the first crossroad is behind us now. <laughs> I, I'm very pleased with the way it turned out, and uh, I, I hope everybody <laughs> tries to come on the 20th to the next one that we get to. But uh, I, we had a lot of people from the community, and I saw a lot of people visiting and talking to one another. So I think it was very good. Yay, God. That was lovely, and the music was just wonderful. I enjoyed both of the ones that we had, um, the group and the um, the solo performer. They were both wonderful. Any others? Happy to have my daughter here with me today. All so, right. Yay. We're happy too. Glad you're here. Thank you. Happy to have my mom at 92. When there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, yes. Well, um, we have the joy of going to uh, Alabama starting uh, uh, Tuesday. Oh, granddaughter's wedding. Okay, so prayers for Peter and Michelle for traveling mercies this coming weekend and a joyous celebration of a wedding. Yay, God. Lord, in your mercy. Um, I believe, you go ahead, he has to. To all. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Um, we had visitors yesterday and that spent um, all afternoon and into the evening with us that we were really happy about. Um, our middle son and his wife and little grand newborn grandson came. Yeah, he's already a month old, y'all. And they came and spent a lot of time with us. So um, Poppy, Poppy and Gigi got a lot of cuddling time in yesterday. So if we seem especially happy, that's probably got something to do with it. Uh, any others? Prayers? Joys? Yes. Just that I got a lot done yesterday that I've been putting off and felt trapped and I, I got a lot done. <laughs> well, yeah, God, for getting things accomplished. There you go. Well, there are many things in the world and on our list. I want to add, um, I think you, you'll see on here that and for a little while now we have had Dot's uh, brother-in-law Eddie Long on the list. Eddie passed yesterday and has entered the church triumphant. So prayers for his family, um, including Dot's uh, sister, Frankie, and um, I believe Eddie had a couple of grown children as well. So, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And continue to keep Dot in your prayers because she is you know, kind of holding everything together for people, I think, and traveling back and forth a lot. So our prayers for her as well. Lord, in your mercy. All right. Um, and continued prayers for Katrina's family. Lord, in your mercy. All right. Um, Dolores, your cousin? I haven't heard from him this week. Okay. I've got to check on him. Okay. And we continue our <laughs> prayers also for. Uh, Ukraine and all the people, as George said a few weeks ago, taking in refugees. That is a lot, but it is needed. So, Lord, in your mercy. All right, well, let's join our hearts. We can't join our hands right now, but let's join our hearts as we take a moment of silent prayer, and then we will move 
on into um, prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Loving God, we have gathered here to lift up today and this time to lift up all those things on our heart. Some we speak loud and some we only share with you. This is a day that is uh, joyful in many ways, but for others it is also filled with um, grief and pain for many and various reasons. So we come here today knowing that and lift everyone up to you. We give you thanks for the women in our lives, no matter who they are, who support us, who pray for us, who have the strength to care for us when we need it, those who are always there to laugh with us and hold our hands, for all of those who care for the people in their lives, we just give you thanks for them. We thank you for this time together to share one another's concerns and joys let us be the church for each other the body of christ and let us pray now as you taught us so long ago through those first disciples the lord's prayer saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Our next hymn is number 314 in the United Methodist Hymnal. In the garden, won't you stand and join me in singing?
New Testament lesson this morning is um, John 10, 22 through 30. At that time, the festival of dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Well, this morning, you know, there's something about a sermon series that I really love. I know where I'm going for the next few weeks, and I can just kind of dig into that. I'm not sure how far we're going to make it today into this one. Um, we may not even finish the first chapter, but at least we will get started. So um, let's pause for just a minute and let me pray. Gracious God, here I am. I ask that the words that proceed from my mouth will be the words that you give me. I thank you for allowing me to be here today to preach your word, and I pray that you will be here with me to give me what I need as I need it. I pray it all brings honor and glory to you. We pray it in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, I'm doing something today that in 20 some odd years I have never done before. Now, I know the book, I've read the book. For some reason, I have never preached Esther in a church before. I don't even know how that happened because it is such a um, book of strong women. How I miss doing that, I don't know. We don't see a lot of it, I don't think, in our lectionary. I think there's a snippet somewhere, George. Is that correct? It's one That's what I thought as well. And evidently, it's on the day where there was always something else that I felt drawn to. But it just seemed like a good time to begin a sermon on the book of Esther. Um, Samuel Wells, who was the pastor at the um, at Duke Divinity of the chapel there for a while, and he was there for part of my time there, not all of it, but a little bit of it, uh, in a book that he wrote, a commentary on Esther, he says that the book of Esther is a story of a people who found or were finding, I might have tweaked him a little bit, um, that the Passover story, the story Christians tend to assume is the story of the Old Testament, right? Because that's kind of, you know, we have these benchmarks. We see everything pretty much from the cross, right? We're people who the cross forward is, is kind of our benchmark, right? The cross, the empty tomb, that's, that's our Christian benchmark. And the people of the Old Testament is the Exodus, right? The Passover, the Exodus, all of those things. But he says that turned out it wasn't enough. If they were to survive, the Jews had to make their own story. And so this book is a story that, um, it, it's a different story. It's um, one that uses a lot of humor. They're talking about some very serious things, and humor is used to help them get through that time and that story. So we're going to be looking at a lot of that um, over the next few weeks. It is the custom for the Feast of Purim to read this out loud. This is something that was read out loud. It is not read. It is not read like this. This is what happened back when Azarus lived. There he is. It is read like a story. Don't you want to hear all of your stories read with, you know, some enthusiasm if it takes that or whatever? Well, this one is intended to be read. It's intended for you to laugh in places. It is intended to make you think. 
It is a story of, of a people. There are two, at least, very strong women in this story. Now, the name of the book is the book of Esther, but you're not going to hear about Esther today. In the part we're going to read in just a minute, you're going to hear more about the king and about Queen Vashti. There are a lot of names in this first book, and, you know, I'm probably going to blunder <laughs> Please forgive me if I don't pronounce them um, all correctly. It's one of those things where everybody pronounces some of them a little bit differently, so y'all pretend like I know exactly what I'm doing, and we'll be fine. David, I, I, I'm going to keep you right there because you will laugh with me, and I love that. Every pastor needs a David to laugh with her. So let's read, and then we're going to go back and forth a little bit with what little bit of time we have left this morning. This is what happened back when Ahasuerus lived, the very Ahasuerus who ruled from India to Cush, 127 provinces in all. At that time, Ahasuerus ruled the kingdom from his royal throne in the fortified part of Susa. In the third year of his rule, he hosted a feast for all his officials and courtiers. The leaders of Persia and Media attended along with his excuse me, provincial officers, officials and officers. I'm old now. I need bigger print. He shutted off the awesome riches of his kingdom and beautiful treasures as mirrors of how very great he was. Who wasn't that nice of him? The event lasted a long time. Six whole months, to be exact. After that, the king held a seven-day feast for everyone in the fortified part of Susa. Whether they were important people in the town or not, they all met in the walled garden of the royal palace. White linen curtains and purple hangings were held up by shining white, red, and purple ropes tied to silver rings and marble posts. Gold and silver couches set on a mosaic floor made of gleaming purple crystal, marble, and mother of pearl. They served the drinks in cups made of gold, and each cup was different. The king made sure there was plenty of royal wine. The rule about the drinks was no limits. Bottomless cup. The king had, six months, y'all, bottomless cup. The king had ordered everyone serving wine in the palace to offer as much as each guest wanted. At the same time, Queen Vashti held a feast for the women in King Ahasuerus' palace. On the seventh day, when the wine had put the king in high spirits, he gave an order to Mehuam, Bisba, Arbona, Bigtha, Abak, uh, excuse me, Abakva, Zethar, and Carcass, the seven units who served King Ahasuerus personally. They were to bring Queen Vashti before him wearing the royal crown. Oh, let's just go ahead and stop and talk. Do you know that the most of the, the rabbis and the people who have studied this believe that it was only the royal royal crown, uh, excuse me, royal crown. Wow, I didn't have anything to drink. Royal crown that he ordered she be brought there in. Now hold that in mind. And let's we'll stop here. I want you to do something else too. Let's just pause for a moment. Everybody in this room has at least one, probably, and more women in their lives, either a woman or some women of any age in your life that you love, that you respect, that you appreciate. Correct? As you hear this story, think of that person. These stories make a lot more difference to us when we think of this. This could be someone that I know and love. Okay? I mean, it's a story. It's intended to teach us, so let's learn something. So, 
We're back to Queen Vashti. They, she was ordered to be brought before him wearing the royal crown. She was gorgeous. And he wanted to show off her beauty both to the general public and to his important guests. Well, what that kind of him. But Queen Vashti refused to come as the king had ordered through the eunuchs. The king was furious, his anger boiling inside. Now, when a need arose, the king would often talk with certain very smart people about the best way to handle it. Well, now, wait a minute. Isn't he the king? Isn't he the one that makes these decisions? He's the one that's supposed to be able to make these decisions, but look at what's happened here. The queen has already told him no. And good for her, by the way. She should have told him no. I'm proud of her for telling him no. But now he's not sure what to do, so he's getting other people to tell him how to handle it. They were people who knew both the kingdom's written laws and what judges had decided about cases in the past. The ones he talked with most often were Karshina, Shithar, Admatha, Tarshish, Marys, Marcina, and Hukun. They were seven very important people in Persia and Media who, as the kingdom's highest leaders, were in the king's inner circle. So the king said to them, According to the law, what should I do with Queen Vashti since she didn't do what King Ahasuerus ordered her through the eunuchs? You know, this is, we are supposed to think here of King Xerxes. He was the king during this time. Then the Mukin spoke up in front of the king and the officials. Queen Vashti, he said, has done something wrong, not just to the king himself. She has also done wrong to all the officials and the peoples in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus. This is the reason. News of what the queen did will reach all women. This news will reach all the women. See, they're not so worried about what this is going to mean for him. They're afraid the women in their houses, their homes, their wives, their daughters are going to start wanting to do whatever it is they want to do. Have mercy. Mm -mm. They will say, King uh, um, Osiris uh, ordered servants to Queen Vashti before him, but she refused to come. This very day, the important women of Persia, media, who hear about the queen will tell the royal officials the same thing. There will be no end of put-downs and arguments. Now, if the king wishes, let him send out a royal order and have it written into the laws of Persia and media. Laws no one can ever change. It should say that Vashti will never again come before King Osiris. It should also say that the king will give her royal place to someone better than she. When the order comes, becomes public, the whole empire, vast as it is, all women will treat their husbands properly. There you go. They, this is not anything selfish on their part at all, right? No, of course not. The rule should touch everyone, whether from important family or not. Every single one of them. The king liked the plan, as did the other men. Y'all didn't see that coming, did you? Yeah. And he did just what Mimukin said. He sent written orders to all the king's provinces. Each province received it written in its own alphabet, and each people received it in its own language. It said that each husband should rule over his own house. Well, there you go. Bless king, the king's heart. You know, <coughs> you can tell that this is a story written to make us think, right? It is a story written to talk about 
what happened. As this story unfolds, we're going to hear how it is another threat to all of the Jewish people. It is a genocide threat is coming in this story. And so now we are learning how Queen Vashti has gotten out of the way so that another queen can be brought in. And that's going to take a little bit of time to do, but they're going to get there. And that's going to put Esther in place for saving her people. So we're going to be talking about that over the next few weeks. But I love that Queen Vashti did not just do what was demanded of her when she knew that this was not good for her. This was not a good thing. For her to walk into a room full of drunken men wearing a crown only. Why would he ask that of her? Everything he has, he is showing off. He is just showing off all of what he has. And he sees her as another thing that he owns. So yay for her for standing up for herself, for knowing that she is not property. She is a human being created in the image of God. What you will not hear as we read these stories over the next few weeks, you will not hear God speak in this story. Nowhere will it say that God spoke to them Nowhere will you see them stop to pray and ask God what to do. Does that mean God is not present? If we listen as the story unfolds each week, if we listen to what each person says and does, we will find God in the story. Um, and you will find places where someone is trying not to listen to God at all in the stories. But I do believe that we will see and hear God's presence there in various ways. So I want you to be on the lookout for that as we read each week, okay? Be on the lookout for that. But think of those women in your life that you love, that you respect, that you want no harm at all to come to. How would you feel if that person that you're thinking of right now had been Queen Vashti? You wouldn't want her anywhere near that room full of people who were inebriated, who just wanted to see her as a piece of property for them to ogle or worse. So today we look at how we protect people. Now we can do that. She was a strong woman and she stood up for herself. And we can all be there to stand up for someone else. There should have been people there helping her. There should have been people surrounding her with protection. Let's be that for each other. I think it's what we're called to do. It is a short look at our story today and there's so much more that uh, we are going to say but um, you might find it interesting that uh, Ahasuerus' name means mighty man. Mighty man. It is the same title that the actual King Xerxes had printed or carved into his statues and things that were um, out there with his name on it. Mighty man. Mm -hmm. Vashti is Persian for best. She was the best. So anyway, other things for you just to look at. I don't know if they'll mean anything to you or not, but notice the number seven in here. We hear a lot about um, just today. It was the seventh day after the sixth month period. It's the seventh day. Um, there are seven eunuchs. There are seven noble consultants. Um, seg uh, seven signifying a complete, something complete, something finished. 
So notice those kinds of things. As we read each week, look for things you see continue to pop up over and over again that we might see what that is meaning for us. So, there will be a lot more to come, but I want us to stop right there today and let's see where we can go with this next week. Let's pray for a minute. Precious God, throughout history, we see instances of genocide. All around us, we see people of particular countries or religions, cultures, who others want to erase. It happens time and time again. For the Jewish people, this story gave them something to hold on to. This is a story of hope, of remembering. This is a story to celebrate. This is a story where they win. I think sometimes, God, it is hard for us here in the United States, especially when so much of the horrible things happen, we see people who look like us committing those crimes. Help us be people who stand firm, who support those in need, who stand beside people and take up their cause and help them in whatever way we can. Give us courage like Vashti had. We'll see Esther find a different way to stand up and change things. So help us learn from both these strong women in the weeks ahead. And help us today remember all the strong women who surround us in our lives, that we might give them respect and love, that we might support them. We pray all of this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Our last hymn is number 577 in our Methodist hymnal, God of Grace and God of Glory. And we'll be singing verses 1, 3, and 4.
time this week to look around you. Look for someone who might need a strong person to stand with you, to stand by their side. You are strong people of God. And you can do that for someone else who needs someone to help them out. So go in peace and strength to serve God and your neighbors in all that you do. And may the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you and keep you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.